Number 5. Nephilim. This one I can get behind for sure. How the pyramids were built still baffles me, and reading all about these things at least makes my brain relax for a second. The Giants. The Talls. The Long Neck People. The Nephilim. Again, never been a Bible guy myself, so no judgment if you say all this happened, but I'm just catching up on all this stuff. But in short, the Nephilim were like the offspring of angels and human women, according to Genesis 6, 1, 4, and Jude. The Nephilim are also mentioned in Numbers 13, 33, but it is likely that by this time in Israel's history, Nephilim was used as a term for a tall, intimidating peoples. It's plausible that the Nephilim were both half angels and half giants, making them absolutely huge and absolutely Absolutely super strong. The Nephilim were the children of the sons of gods and daughters of men. And Christian scholars have theorized that the sons of gods were actually these demonic fallen angels who reproduced with women. Being the offspring of partial angelic heredity, the Nephilim were considered mighty men who are of old the men of renown. The ancients. These people were huge, claiming that they were like five times the size of an average man. In the Hebrew Bible, a group of mysterious beings or people of unusually large size and length who lived both before and after the flood were called Nephilimus, sometimes translated to giants. Even the fallen ones from the Hebrew Nephil, meaning to fall. Seems like these people were writing about similar stuff, huh? Spooky. Number four, 200 million horsemen. This next one is not really a creature as much as it's the end of a lot of all of us. All this Armageddon stuff they were saying, that's some pretty strange stuff that's on its way. Book of Revelation stuff, you know? Quote, I saw as God wanted to show me the horses and the men on them. The men had pieces of iron on their chests. These were red like fire and blue like the sky and yellow like sulfur. The heads of the horses looked like the heads of lions. Fire and smoke and sulfur came out of their mouths. One third part of all man was killed by the fire and smoke and sulfur that came out of their mouths. Word for word, horsemen or ancient biblical technology? This sounds horrifying. Also, 200 million? That's a lot of flying flaming horses just trucking around the skies and sands like giant tanks firing fire out of their mouths and nose. As I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, and a great cloud with brightness around it, and fire flashing forth continually, and in the midst of the fire, as it were gleaming metal. And from the midst of all this came likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had a human likeness. Hmm. Okay. You put a Baja hoodie on me at a Dave Matthews concert and hear me saying all that stuff, you probably just think I'm some sci-fi stoner. Nope. This is riveting material, folks. I need to read this thing front to back. Apparently, this force was supposed to have taken out or is going to take out a third of the entire world's population. I know like three things that can do that. Pandemics, missiles, and floods. However, if men and horses showed up with lion heads breathing fire, safe to say it's game over. Number three, the Leviathan. Okay, at first I was like, oh, that's a roller coaster at Canada's Wonderland. No, 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 this vicious monster was actually modeled after this vicious monster. The Leviathan, the second of the great monsters described in the book of Job. This Leviathan, Leviathan, is an absolute massive sea monster who's impervious to human weapons, breathes fire, and emits smoke from his nostrils. Uh, yeah, so this is a Zelda boss, for sure. The Leviathan is probably related to another ancient monster called Lotan, a seven-headed giant serpent who represents primeval chaos, as with pretty much every other biblical creature does. Hey, these things aren't meant to be cute and fuzzy. There's some less exciting theories that insist the Leviathan is just a dramatic interpretation of a crocodile or anaconda or maybe a plesiosaur resembling something like the Loch Ness Monster. But that doesn't explain the breathing fire thing or the size. Was this giant sea snake a water dragon? Because apparently it's like 300 miles long. Yeah, terrifying. Scary thing now is many different religions and cultures have their own version of the Leviathan. Tiamat, Hydra, Jormungandr. Maybe this thing was just hunted into extinction. I don't know. What do you think? Number two, Archangel Michael. It is said that the angels are not humans, but creatures made from God's creation. I've also seen what the Bible describes angels looking like, and it's not handsome people with wings. Apparently, a lot of these things, people really couldn't even describe what they were seeing in front of them. But we'll get to what these things look like in a minute. Of those creatures, Satan, aka Lucifer, is one. The one. However, here is even one creature that Satan fears more than any creature, and that's fellow Archangel Michael or Saint Michael. Some say they're brothers, some say they were on the same team for a bit. This is some good stuff, people. Quote, now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. 
but he was defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Revelation 12, 7, 9. Okay, so hold on. He and them are all down here with us? That's terrifying. Apparently Michael led that army, that won, so whatever scares Satan, scares the hell out of me as well. Also, all these pictures and statues of him and like window panes are all of him like wielding a giant sword made of light, just stepping on Satan's back as a hero. That's pretty intimidating, not gonna lie. And coming in at the number one spot, Ophanim. Okay, so what angels actually looked like? Apparently it was like giant geometrical feathers with eyes and a consciousness. Some had horns, some had hooves, lots of golden metal colors. This next thing doesn't even make sense to my brain. I feel like this is an ant hill trying to understand an iPhone. Quote, as I looked at the living creatures, I saw a wheel on the ground beside each creature with its four faces. This was the appearance and structure of the wheels. They sparked like topaz and all four looked alike. Each appeared to be made like a wheel, intersecting a wheel. As they moved, they would go in any one of the four directions the creatures were faced. The wheels did not change direction as the creatures went. Their rims were high and awesome, and all four rims were full of eyes all around. Ezekiel 1, 15, 18. Uh, first off, is this thing even a creature? Yeah, everything I see here is an alien. Is this just us trying to process some sort of like energy being with eyes? Because if I saw Lucifer that looks like the hunk on the Netflix show, and then I saw this thing? One of the Dead Sea Scrolls interprets them as angels. Late sections of the Book of Enoch interprets them as class of celestial beings who don't sleep and guard the throne of God. Whatever these thing or things are, it sounds and looks absolutely horrifying. How could you paint that on a ceiling? I would just give up and paint wings in a halo as well. For real though, like that is a spaceship of some sort, isn't it? I mean, I understand the times, maybe the science wasn't there, but this thing is straight out of a sci-fi novel. Number five, driveway alien. Coming up first on our list is going to be this weird weird video of what looks to be, I'm gonna be honest with you, a visitor from another world touching down on the driveway. Now you wouldn't expect aliens to make first contact in Colorado, but hey, here we are. In the video, we can see a really scrawny little creature running up and down Vivian Gomez's driveway. This creature had people talking after she posted the video to Facebook because, well, well look at it, what is it? <laughs> it's almost like it's got these giant like elephant ears flopping around when it moves, and I'm not gonna lie to you, this looks a lot like Dobby from Harry Potter, so we might have to seriously entertain the possibility that this is an elf that just got a sock and is running in happiness to be free. The woman whose driveway caught the security footage, Vivian Gomez, had this to offer alongside the video when she posted it on Facebook. So I woke up on Sunday morning and saw this on my camera and I'm trying to figure out what the heck. First I saw this shadow walking from my front door and then I saw this thing. Has anyone else seen this on their cameras? The other two cameras didn't pick it up for some reason. Now unfortunately, her security system would only film for about 10 seconds or so. So this is the only footage she had of the mysterious driveway creature. Gomez clarified for everyone that whatever this thing was, it wasn't her son. It wasn't a kid in a costume because she doesn't let him out by himself that late. Although I think there's definitely a real question to be asked that she saw this thing running down her driveway late at night. She considered the very real possibility that it might be her son. Like I said, I'm pretty sure the most reasonable, rational explanation is that this is a freed house elf very excited for his future in the first time. Or an alien, very possibly. Could be an alien that just touched down, or could also be a Terminator traveling in time. That's why I look naked. Gang, let me know down below what you think this mystery monster could have been. I'm, I'm curious to hear your input. And if you're looking for more scary content, don't even move a finger. We'll have scary videos playing after this one and hundreds more on the channel. Drop a subscribe for fresh screams in your inbox every day, twice a day. Number four, the tentacle beast. Now, let's take a deep dive underwater for our next one and take a look at something freaky and tentacly. Ah, oh, this feels nice. This feels like getting back to my roots talking about weird sea creatures. You know how much I love the Megalodon. A research crew comprised of marine biologists spotted the strange creature while on board the EV Nautilus, a research vessel used by the Ocean Exploration Trust, a nonprofit that conducts deep sea research. While they were down there, they captured footage of a gigantic, bizarre tentacled sea creature swimming around the depths, and researchers have yet to be able to correctly identify it, leaving them to wonder if perhaps 
This is the discovery of a new species entirely. Luckily, they caught footage of this weird little thing so we can all enjoy it. The creature has a bunch of tentacles extending 16 inches from nearly 7 foot long stalk and a single polyp with barbed tentacles cupping the polyp like spiky petals. The creature kind of looks like a bizarre angry spiky flower flowing through the water more than it does any other marine life I can think of. I'm pretty sure I saw this thing swimming around in the corner in one of the 800 scenes about swimming in Avatar 2. This nasty little thing was found 8,000 meters beneath the surface where all the truly terrifying life starts to form and mother nature gets really creative in a Jackson Pollock kind of way. The expedition's lead researcher, one Steve Auskovich and a deep sea biologist described the sighting as fascinating and I'd describe it as horrifying but hey we each do our own thing. From time to time we come across something that we never expected to see and those are often the most powerful observations. Look I'll stop you right there man. That sounds way too much like Jurassic Park dialogue for me to feel 100% comfortable. I'll stay where I am, you stay where you are. We'll stay in each other's lanes. Number three, the Nightwalker. Coming up next is a mysterious figure that was recorded on security camera footage from Moorhead, Kentucky. That's in the US if you didn't know. Brought to us by trusted name in paranormal news, Paranormality Magazine. The video got a ton of attention, garnering a half million views or so, and you can see why. It shows this wretched, pale, hunched over creature running around what looks like a downtown parking lot. What's really creepy about this whole thing is trying to figure out how big it is, you know? It's hunched over, which doesn't make it any easier, but you try and compare it to the car in the video and you can kind of see that it looks like it only comes up to the trunk. Is it a goblin? A gnome? Is this another freed house elf? Has there been a resurgence in freed elves? You can't even make out what the creature's face looks like or if it has any facial features at all, to be honest. Like most good supernatural videos, the camera quality is very choppy. If you've got a keen eye, you probably noticed it's not a rip of the security camera proper, but rather someone recording a monitor. So it's a video recording of a recording, and you're watching a recording of a recording of a recording, so it's not the most crystal clear. Some commenters on the video are not nearly as convinced as me, your host who is easily and immediately convinced by everything he sees. Some have suggested that it could just be somebody in a morph suit, it could just be some youngsters having a bit of fun, but hey, I listen to those and I offer you, it could also very well be a demon sneaking around a parking lot. We listen to all sides and we take them very seriously here at Top 5 Scary. Number 2, Pale Walker. Coming up next is a clip out of India that went viral last year and captured the attention of paranormal enthusiasts, alien hunters, and skeptics alike. It's really nice when you can get everyone in the community together like that. In this video, a strange, pale, humanoid-like figure was spotted walking across the road in India baffling the heck out of just about everybody who saw it. Whatever it was, it was filmed walking alone steadily on a bridge at night in Yarkland in eastern India, staggering through the night. The thing resembles a human enough, and that's what my brain tells me it is, that's what Occam's razor suggests it should be. But the more you look at it, the more you start to wonder if maybe, just maybe, this might be something else. The creature is gangly, and it has these long arms and long legs, pale white skin, and a very skinny torso. Gosh, imagine having a skinny torso, being very pale, having very long arms and oh, gangly. Could not imagine what that's like. Could not imagine what that's like at all. It looks a great deal more like a monster out of Silent Hill 2 than it does a person. Motorcyclists in the video are swerving out of the way of the figure, which stops and stares at them for a bit before continuing to stroll onwards like it ain't no thing. Naturally, this got more people talking and wondering as to just what this thing could possibly be. More than a few people suggested that it could be an alien walking around the streets at night, explaining why it seems so confused about where it is. Some commenter even suggested that if you watch the sky, there's some lights up there. I don't know, I didn't see the video enough times. Others even suggested the possibility of it being a ghost, which would be pretty spooky. I'm always open to something turning out to be a ghost. I love a ghost. It does seem like it's interacting with the physical plane though, and those motorcyclists are trying to swerve out of it. So I'm not 100% on that. And finally, there's the realists, who I guess we have to listen to sometimes, who suggested that this could just be someone who had a long, long, long night and is lost possibly on one, two, or all of the substances, staggering home trying to get a good night's sleep. Now as far as I know, no one ever cracked this case, so hey, we may never have a satisfying answer to this. I think this thing should get in contact with the weird little creatures from point five and point three, and maybe they can form a weird little pale creatures caught on CCTV footage union. I like this one too, let me know down below what you think of this, I'm, I'm, I wanna hear everybody's opinions. Number one, the Chupacabra. And finally, coming in at our number one spot is going to be 
my beloved chupacabra. Oh, do I love the chupacabra. It's probably one of my favorite cryptids. If I've ever said another cryptid was my favorite before on this channel, I am now officially retconning it that I have always been saying chupacabra. I love that in the world of cryptids, you know, you got cool things like Mothman or the Flatwoods monster that might be an alien, and then the chupacabra is just like a weird dog. You know, sometimes it's a goblin, but most descriptions of the chupacabra just make it out to be like kind of an angry big dog. Well, take a look at this footage of a big angry freaky mangy mutt that's got people clutching their pearls and locking up the livestock. Recently captured footage out of Argentina shows a bizarre looking creature that almost resembles like a mix of a horse and a dog wandering the streets, and it had people scared. Like it looks like a dog for sure, but an absolutely massive size one, like bigger than me. I'm talking like Marmaduke size, as hard as that is to imagine. This strange creature was said to have savagely attacked at two dogs, fatally injuring a pit bull at a German shepherd. So whatever it is, we know it is angry. Chupacabras typically tend to stick to goats as their favorite prey. I mean, their name almost literally translates to goat sucker. And when you learn that about them, they become infinitely less scary. The clip was fairly popular, garnering near 400,000 views on YouTube, and if you ask me, it definitely looks like a chupacabra to me. The chupacabra is one that, I don't know, every couple years, something will come out about it. Someone will discover a weird dog and get a video of it, and most time it just ends up being a coyote missing fur with mange or something, but hey, goats keep going missing, keep showing up sucked out of all their blood. So maybe there really are chupacabras hiding out there, or maybe I just need to believe that they exist. At number five, the minotaur. The last creature you ever want to encounter is a giant buff dude with a bull for a head, but that's exactly what the minotaur is. The story of the Minotaur is quite a strange one, but it goes like this. The king of Crete, Minos, made a deal with Poseidon that in exchange for his blessing, Minos would sacrifice his most beautiful bull to him each year. Though one year, an extremely beautiful white bull was born. So beautiful, in fact, that Minos vowed to keep it. Instead of sacrificing this white bull to Poseidon as he was supposed to, he kept it, and instead sacrificed his second most beautiful bull to the god of the sea. Of course, Poseidon was aware of this deception made by the king and decided to punishment. The punishment in question? He cursed Minos' wife, Pasiphae, to fall in love with the beautiful white bull. And when I say love, I mean love. Pasiphae was so in love with the bull, in fact, that she went to Daedalus, a renowned architect and craftsman, and asked him to craft a wooden cow for her so that she could hide within it and, well, um, do the deed with the beautiful bull. This led to her pregnancy and eventual birth of her bull-headed son. Pretty messed up on Poseidon's part to curse her like that, but hey, the gods were known for their vengeful nature, and Poseidon was no exception. Pasiphae cared for the Minotaur as if she would any other child, but Minos, ashamed of how the child came to be, enlisted the help of the legendary artificer Daedalus to create a prison to hide the Minotaur. This prison is the famous maze known as the Labyrinth, a near inescapable maze filled with confusing corridors, staircases, and and familiar turns that'll have even the most skilled navigators lost. Considering the Minotaur's hunger for flesh, the labyrinth was used as a form of punishment by King Minos, sending the disloyal to their deaths by trapping them in the never-ending maze to eventually be found and eaten by the Minotaur. I'm sure you can imagine the sense of dread that fills the halls of the labyrinth, the smell of rotting flesh, the only noise you can hear being the approaching starved beast that wanders its halls. Many archaeologists believe that the myth of the labyrinth comes from the Kingdom of Crete's very own confusing architecture, as it has over 1,300 different hallways and staircases that lead all across its basements. Of course, these were no labyrinth, but it could be the origin of the concept. The Minotaur was eventually slain by the hero Theseus, as he ventured into the labyrinth with a ball of yarn to keep track of his path and was able to defeat the Minotaur in combat. Perhaps death was a mercy on the Minotaur, who was locked up all those years, cursed to feed upon the flesh of those who crossed his father. Well, not really his father, but the closest thing to it that isn't a literal bull. And at number four, the Hydra. Also known as the Hydra of Lerna, the Hydra is a serpentine water monster that spawns from Greek and Roman mythology. It lurks within the Lake of Lerna, which is thought to be an entrance to the underworld. So right off the bat, you know this thing means business. The Hydra is the offspring of Typhony and Echidna, two other serpent-like monsters of great power and significance in Greek myth. But the Hydra is a cut above the rest. The Hydra famously has several heads. Most typically, it's depicted with 50 that regenerate whenever they cut off. In certain myths, the Hydra is known to regenerate two heads for every head that gets taken off. 
meaning slaying it is a truly impossible feat. But if it isn't the 50 hungry heads that gets you, you'll certainly have trouble fending off against its poisonous breath. That is so toxic, just a whiff of it could kill you. The Hydra is quite famously featured in Percy Jackson. In the movie and book, the dragon of the lake steps out of the water and attacks Percy at a museum. Because, of course, it isn't even limited to the confines of its home. In Greek myth, the only one known to slay the Hydra of Lerna was Hercules, as he had to for the second of his 12 labors, a punishment given to him after killing his own wife and their youngsters. Hercules, like many before him, attempted to kill the Hydra by cutting off its heads. But much to his dismay, two more grew in the place of each one decapitated. Will you forget the head slicing thing? Which was when he discovered that the only weakness of the Hydra was that it was unkillable so long as it had at least one head. So Hercules called upon his nephew for help. His nephew gave Hercules the idea to use a torch to cauterize the head wound of every cut off head of the Hydra preventing it from growing its heads back. Once it was left with but one, Hercules cut it off with a golden sword and placed the immortal head under a rock, never to be found again. However, not everyone is a demigod with the same wit as Hercules' cousin, so if any sort of hydra found its way to us, let's just say we're screwed. At number three, Fenrir. Fenrir, also known as Fenris Wolf, stands as one of the most terrifying and enigmatic creatures in Norse mythology. Born of the trickster god Loki and the giantess Angerboa, this monstrous wolf embodies chaos, destruction, and the uncontrollable forces of nature. Fenrir's appearance alone strikes fear into the hearts of both gods and mortals. He is described as a colossal wolf with fur as black as the darkest night, eyes that burn like molten lava, and teeth that are nothing short of dagger-like. This formidable creature's sheer size and aura of malevolence make him an unmistakable symbol of impending doom. But it's not just Fenrir's physical presence that makes him terrifying. It's his insatiable appetite for destruction and his role in the apocalyptic event known as Ragnarok. The gods recognized his growing power and sought to contain him, chaining him with Glipnir, a magical chain crafted by the dwarves from impossible materials like the breath of fish and the roots of a mountain. Despite this, Fenrir's growing strength rendered Glepnir ineffective, and he continued to grow, eventually eventually breaking free to fulfill his terrible destiny. Fenrir's role in Ragnarok is pivotal. He is destined to break free from his chains and join the forces of chaos and destruction in the final battle against the gods. During this epic clash, he devours Odin, the chief of the Aesir, symbolizing the ultimate triumph of chaos over order. His insatiable hunger knows no bounds, and his actions hasten the end of the world as it's known, plunging it into a catastrophic, fiery cataclysm. Fenrir's terrifying nature extends beyond his physical prowess and apocalyptic role. He represents the uncontrollable and untamable aspects of existence, reminding us that even the mightiest of forces can be harnessed only for a time before breaking free. His presence serves as a reminder of the fragility of order and the ever-present threat of chaos lurking in the shadows. In Norse mythology, Fenrir embodies the profound duality of terror and fascination. While his monstrous form and destructive potential evoke dread, his role in the grand narrative of Ragnarok adds depth and complexity to his character. He forces us to confront the inevitability of change and the cyclical nature of existence, where even the gods themselves are not exempt from the forces of chaos and destruction. Fenrir, the monstrous wolf of Norse myth, serves as a chilling reminder of the primal forces that shape our world and the importance of finding balance in the face of inevitable change. And at number two, Gorgons. The Gorgons, with their most infamous member being the monstrous Medusa, stand as one of the most terrifying and malevolent creatures in Greek mythology. These fearsome sisters are characterized by their hideous appearance, serpentine features, and the power to turn anyone who gazes upon them into stone. Medusa in particular embodies the epitome of evil within the Gorgon trio. Her story is one of tragedy and transformation, but it's also a tale of unrelenting malevolence. Once a beautiful priestess of Athena, she incurred the wrath of the goddess when she was seduced by Poseidon in Athena's sacred temple. As punishment, Athena transformed her golden locks into writhing serpents and cursed her with the deadly gaze that could petrify any who met her eyes. Medusa's transformation into a gorgon marked her descent into evil. She became a pariah, an outcast, and a symbol of terror. Her malevolence lay not only in her appearance, but also in the peril she posed to anyone who dared to cross her path. She retreated to a desolate island where her deadly abilities became a weapon, and she reveled in turning those unfortunate enough 
to approach her into lifeless statues. Medusa's sinister reputation only grew as the hero Perseus embarked on a quest to decapitate her and claim her head as a trophy. And yes, she appears in Percy Jackson too. Great books, great movies. The gods aided him with gifts such as Hades' helmet of invisibility and Hermes' winged sandals. With these, he approached the Gorgon and, avoiding direct eye contact, severed her head. Even in death, Medusa's malevolence endured, for her head still possessed the power to petrify. Perseus later used her severed head as a weapon against his foes, highlighting the enduring evil of her legacy. Medusa's story serves as a cautionary tale of the destructive consequences of unchecked rage and the cruel hand of fate. Her transformation from a revered priestess to a monstrous gorgon is a stark reminder of the capriciousness of the gods in Greek mythology. Her evil lies not only in her appearance and actions, but also in the tragic nature of her existence. The gorgons, with Medusa at the forefront, remain as enduring symbols of terror and malevolence in the rich tapestry of Greek mythology. They remind us that even the most beautiful and virtuous can be subject to the harshest of punishments, and that evil can take root in the unlikeliest of places, ultimately leading to catastrophic consequences for all who encounter it. And at number one, the Kraken. While not belonging to any particular mythology in the same sense as the other creatures on this list, the Kraken is a beast that has struck fear into the hearts of seafarers across the world. The Kraken, a legendary sea monster of Scandinavian folklore, is a fearsome and enigmatic creature that has captured the imagination of sailors and storytellers for centuries. This colossal sea monster is said to dwell in the dark, uncharted waters of the North Atlantic, terrorizing sailors who dared to venture into its domain. The mythos surrounding the Kraken paints it as an enormous tentacled behemoth, capable of pulling entire ships and their crews into the depths of the ocean with ease. Its size is said to be so immense that its body can block out the sun, casting a shadow over the entire vessel it targets. This monstrous creature's appearance alone strikes fear into the hearts of sailors, with its massive tentacles, slimy skin, and a gaping maw filled with row after row of razor-sharp teeth. The origins of the Kraken myth are deeply rooted in the maritime cultures of Scandinavia, particularly among the Norse and the Icelandic people. Tales of the Kraken were often used to explain mysterious disappearances of ships and the treacherous conditions of the North Atlantic. The word Kraken itself is believed to come from the Old Norse word Krak, which means an unhealthy animal or something twisted. Fitting. Despite the fear it instilled, the Kraken held a peculiar place in the mythology of the region. It was sometimes depicted as a protector of the seas, keeping balance in the underwater realm by preying on excessive fish populations or guarding underwater treasures. Some legends even suggested that the Kraken could be appeased with offerings, sparing ships that respected its domain. The Kraken's legend continued to evolve over time, seeping into the broader folklore of the sea. It made appearances in literature, most notably in Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, where it embodied the depths of the unknown ocean. In more recent popular culture, the Kraken has become a staple of maritime adventure stories, often portrayed as a colossal, tentacled menace that threatens the lives of sailors and explorers. Number five on this list is SCP-966. SCP-966 is a very disturbing type of creature that needs to be caught. The SCP Foundation describes them as predatory creatures that resemble hairless humans possessing an elongated face with a mouth lined with needle-like teeth. On each hand, they have five claws that can be up to 20 centimeters long. Although sharp, these are easily broken, making them unfit for combat. SCP-966's height ranges from 1.4 to 1.6 meters, and they can reach up to 30 kilograms in weight. Physically, SCP-966 are weak, possessing hollow bones and low muscular density. They do not seem to rest through sleep. Instead, they will suddenly see cease all movement at seemingly random intervals of time, resuming normal activity three to five minutes later. Now those creatures don't sound very appealing to me, and even though they have weak bones, they aren't something that I'd want to have a run-in with by myself. And my instincts hold true because humans are on the menu for SCP-966. The problem is the way that they hunt. Because they're so frail, a head-on attack isn't how they get their prey. They need to be a lot more stealthy. So what they do instead is emit a very high-pitched frequency that won't allow the individual hearing it to engage in any sleep at all. This applies to REM sleep all the way to micro sleep. It's said that the range of this high-pitched frequency is 20 meters, and once you're hit with it, there's no going back. SCP-966 will then stalk you until your exhaustion incapacitates you to a point where it can safely attack and consume you. 
Along with exhaustion, this high pitch frequency can also bring on vivid hallucinations and sharp changes in someone's temperament. So far, there's been no cure for being hit with this frequency, so even if you're capable of finding SCP-966 and killing it before you get too tired, you'll be doomed to live the rest of your life without sleep, which is effectively a death sentence anyways. Ever since this SCP has been discovered, the numbers have been thinned, but there's still many of them on the loose and at large. Number 4 on this list is SCP-3129. SCP-3129 is a very strange SCP that can't really ever be caught because it's just a phenomenon that occurs. That being said, we need to develop some way to either catch it or stop it from happening because it's very detrimental to our society. There are three stages to this SCP. The first stage, as described by the Foundation, is when phenomena invariably focus upon a human male aged somewhere between 40 and 50, hereafter designated SCP-3129-1. SCP-3129 transmissions can vary in presentation and length wildly, but invariably remain on the topic of SCP-3129-1's apparent election bid. No instances of SCP-3129 have been found outside of the continental United States or present in any non-English languages. So stage 1 is basically something that occurs on television and appears to those who are watching. Stage 2, as described by the Foundation, begins begins after 2-4 to four weeks of exposure to stage 1 phenomena. Up to 8% of viewers will become fixated upon SCP-31291. Civilians more politically aligned with the ideas presented in SCP-3129 commercials are more susceptible to infection. SCP-3129 adverts have not shown any overall political bias. Class B amnestics are effective at treating stage 2 infection. Now the final stage that the foundation describes is an infection displaying fanatical devotion to SCP-31291. They argue with open hostility against opposing viewpoints and ideologies. Stage 3 infected tend to seek out other infected in person and by way of online message boards and communities. This SCP isn't as dangerous as some of the others on this list to our health, but to our society it's by far the most detrimental. Whatever or whoever SCP-3129 chooses to support, those who witness its occurrence will also feel extremely passionate about the same thing. It's effectively a brainwashing tool that no one is in control of. This SCP completely destroys any sense of democracy and takes away our human free will. I don't know how you could catch something like this, but finding a way to identify it when it happens and interfere with the broadcast? I mean, that's definitely something that we need to be looking into. Number 3 on this list is SCP-169. SCP-169 is one of the SCPs on this list that has the potential to kill millions if it's so desired. The Foundation describes this creature as a marine arthropod of a enormous size known as the Leviathan by generations of sailors and oral history. Presumed at first to be a myth, SCP-169 was detected by Mobile Task Force Gamma-6 during an investigation of paranormal activity around the archipelago. During Y6's investigation, a doctor whose name they don't reveal discovered the archipelago to have moved at least 3 kilometers from its original location. Though initially the doctor believed this motion to be due to unusually quick continental drift, a reconnaissance mission performed by the US S revealed the archipelago to be the protrusions of rock-like plates covering an enormous organic mass. The Foundation was brought in immediately to begin threat management. The Foundation goes on to say that they think this arthropod's size is somewhere between 2,000 to 8,000 kilometers long. The Foundation does not specify which archipelago they're talking about, but they do say that if this arthropod was to go deeper into the ocean or the earth, then all these islands would sink as well. The one positive thing about all of this is that the creature is thought to only breathe once every three months. This has led experts to believe that it's in a dormant state and it's not fully awake right now. If it did ever become fully awake and aware, then who knows what this creature is capable of doing. I live in Ontario and the north to south distance of this province is 1,691 kilometers, meaning that this creature could be two, three, or even four times the size of Ontario. I doubt we'd ever be able to fully catch this beast based on how big it is, but some means of Containment, I mean, that would definitely be nice. Number 2 on this list is SCP-3310. SCP-3310 is honestly not much to look at at all. In fact, it's just a tree stump that's floating in a lake. But it's what that tree stump can cause that makes it so dangerous. The Foundation describes SCP-3310 as a 9 meter tall tree stump 
floating in Crater Lake. SCP-3310 is anomalously able to float upright with approximately 1.2 meters of the top remaining above the water at any given time. If removed from the water and returned, SCP-3310 will return to this position. SCP-3310 floats around Crater Lake as a result of non-anomalous weather patterns. The restriction of this movement causes two distinct and possibly linked anomalous phenomena referred to as SCP-3310 and SCP-3310. Previously, activation events were caused by the removal of SCP-3310 from Crater Lake, but recent activation events have occurred while SCP-3310 remained in Crater Lake. Both of these phenomena demanifest after the triggering cause for the manifestation is ended. Now, the first of these phenomena that the Foundation is referring to will cause a great fog to appear over the surrounding areas with torrential rainfalls. In some of the events that have happened, over three meters of water have rained down a very short amount of time, causing massive flooding. The second phenomena has several unknown humanoid entities appear and flock to this tree stump. The entities change depending on the time this happens, and no one has any idea who or what they are. This is why this SCP needs to be stopped and captured. Floods aren't great, but we can deal with those. The entities and what they are capable of, though, is completely unknown to us. One time this happens, they may decide to attack us humans, and without any knowledge of their strength, we might not be able to stop them. For now, we can at least take comfort that we know where this SCP will be, but capturing and containing it should be at the forefront of the Foundation's mind. Number one on this list is SCP-973. SCP-973 is a very unique SCP that only manifests itself on a 60 kilometer stretch of highway, but it's certainly one of the deadliest that I've come across. The SCP Foundation describes this as being two entities. SCP-931 is a police cruiser resembling those used by state troopers in the early 1970s. The vehicle appears to be in an advanced state of disrepair. Eyewitnesses accounts have consistently mentioned large dents in the doors and hood, a heavily cracked windshield heavy rusting, and a loose rear bumper secured with duct tape. SCP-932 is reported as a Caucasian male in his late 40s wearing a state trooper uniform dating from the same time period as SCP-9731. Subject is described as balding, slightly overweight, and having a handlebar mustache. Now nobody knows for sure how this SCP came to be. Some people speculate that this was an old police officer who died along this road and now haunts it. If that is the case though, he was very serious about his job because he only shows up on this high for a very specific event. It needs to be at night, it needs to be on the stretch of highway, and there needs to be somebody driving along that road who's going above the speed limit. If all of those things are met, then SCP-973 has the potential to materialize and will begin chasing down the person driving. While this is happening, the target's radio will simultaneously start malfunctioning and repeating over and over again, run. Over the years, 34 bodies have been found and 19 vehicles have been discovered. I would go into detail about how these bodies were discovered, but it's honestly so graphic that YouTube would definitely flag this video. There have only been five survivors and they've all had serious mental trauma from this experience. I'm not sure how you'd catch SCP-973, but something has to be done to stop these brutalistic deaths. Number five on this list is Moby Dick. Even if you haven't personally sat down and read the famous story of Captain Ahab and his hated rival, Moby Dick, I feel like everybody has at least heard of the story. Well, turns out it might not be completely fictional. What culture says Moby Dick isn't a myth in the traditional sense of the word, as he's the bane of Captain Ahab's existence in his book by Herman Melville. Still, the idea of a vengeful and vindictive whale has permeated the modern zeitgeist as the target of one's obsession, which is mythical in its own right. In 1820, Captain George Pollard Jr. was in command of the Essex when it was sunk by a whale. He survived and returned to Nantucket where he was given the two brothers to captain, but after two years he crashed it on a coral reef and was thereafter determined to be unlucky at sea. Pollard's troubles with the Essex came from an 85 foot albino sperm whale which directly attacked and smashed into the ship. The whale returned to attack the vessel at greater speed and the Essex began taking on water, leaving the men to flee. Pollard was away from the vessel when the attack occurred. When he returned shortly after the whale slammed into the vessel a second time, he saw his first mate, Owen Chase, who told him, we have been stove by a whale, and with that, the legend that would become Moby Dick 
was born. So Moby Dick, literally this super famous story that always seemed to be fictional, turns out to be based on something 100% real. Now I know that Moby Dick wouldn't necessarily be classified as a myth per se, but I think it's close enough. Also, RIP to my dude Captain George Pollard Jr. He literally suffered so much on the sea and was thought of as such a bad ship captain that he inspired one of the most famous stories literally ever. Number four on this list is Dire Wolves. For those fans of Game of Thrones, this one should stand out to you. What culture says in games like Dungeons and Dragons or television series such as Game of Thrones, dire wolves have been depicted as gigantic wolves capable of easily taking down a large man. They are often described as vicious, hard to train, and efficient killers, but the myth of the dire wolf doesn't exactly line up with reality. Dire wolves were real animals, which went extinct about 9,500 years ago when the last major Ice Age came to an end. Dire wolves weren't gigantic monsters, but they were big animals. Most specimens that have been studied show the dire wolf to be about the same size as modern gray wolves. They weighed around 132 pounds and were capable predators. Their teeth were larger and had a better shearing ability than their modern cousins. They had the strongest bite force at the point of the canine of all canis species. This made it possible for them to prey on horses, camels, mastodon, bison, and humans living during the Ice Age. It's likely tales of their ferocity gave life to the mythological abilities of the animal, which persists today. Sadly, dire wolves are long gone, even if they do sometimes pop up in our nightmares. So the legend of dire wolves has been exaggerated a little bit, but it's all based on fact. I would imagine that our ancestors from 10,000 years ago really had their hands full when it came to these things. That's probably how the legend all started. We were getting shredded by these dire wolves back in the day, and then through word of mouth, it just kept getting passed on through the generations that these are big creatures. Thankfully nowadays, we just have regular wolves that we have got to worry about. Number three on this list is the platypus. Okay, so we have had a lot of scary creatures on this list already, but I just had to throw the platypus on here as well. The platypus, for those who don't know, is a very real animal that still exists today. But back in the day, people didn't think that it could possibly be real. What culture says the myth of the platypus is an interesting one due to the obvious fact that the creature exists. But what we know now and what people believed in Europe in the 18th century, that's a different story. The platypus was first described by Captain John Hunter in 1798. Hunter sent a platypus pelt and a sketch of the animal to Britain, which was a common thing for sailors and naturalists to do when they found a new species. Unfortunately, the naturalists in Britain didn't believe the animal could possibly exist, and as a result, a myth grew surrounding a very real animal. So for a long time, no one thought that the platypus was an actual thing. They had it chalked up as a myth for years until more and more people saw it and it was proven to be real. They are absolutely weird looking animals, so I understand why people may have thought this. Like, let's face it guys, there really isn't a whole lot of animals out there that look like a platypus. Anyways, for quite a while this was thought of in the same vein as dragons or other mythical creatures. Number two on this list is Imugi. This was actually a mythical creature that I wasn't familiar with until researching this video. Imugi are Korean dragons which resemble all forms of Chinese dragons. They are often depicted as long, snake-like reptiles with four legs. Unlike European dragons, Imugi do not have wings and are considered benevolent creatures related to water and agriculture. While there is no such creature in the fossil record, there is something similar called the Titanoboa. Titanoboa was the largest snake to ever slither across the ground and various specimens have been found indicating they could grow up to 42 feet in length and weigh as much as 2,500 pounds. It's highly unlikely anyone in Korea would have ever seen the bones of a Titanoboa as the creature's range was throughout the rainforests of what is now South America. They died out around 58 million years ago so the comparison between the myth and reality is 
entirely coincidental. Like most dragon myths, the Imugi likely arose from ancient people who found bones belonging to the extinct species. Korean findings that gave rise to the myth of dragons likely came from marine reptiles or dinosaur fossils. Additionally, tall tales spread about creatures like Imugi until they explode until mythological beasts. Titanoboa is something we have talked about on this channel before. The sheer strength and power these beasts would have had is almost unimaginable. It's believed that they used to eat crocodiles and alligators like they were nothing. Think about that guys. Just chowing down on one of the biggest reptiles in the world as if it was a light snack. Maybe the Chinese caught wind that these creatures existed back in the day and that's what sparked the myths of the Yamugi. Number one on this list is the rock. I love eagles and birds of prey, I think that they are super cool. but. This is a bit too much. The roc is an enormous bird of prey found in mythology originating in the Middle East. The giant bird was popularized in various fairy tales and folklore from the region and there's a roc in 1001 Nights as well as many other popular stories. Marco Polo recounted his identification of a roc in the 13th century. It was for all the world like an eagle, but one indeed of enormous size, so big in fact that its quills were 12 12 paces long and thick in proportion. And it is so strong that it will seize an elephant in its talons and carry him high into the air and drop him so that he is smashed to pieces having so killed him. The bird swoops down on him and eats him at leisure. The rock as it has been described didn't likely exist, but there are analogs in the fossil records which could easily have given birth to the myth. One such creature was the elephant bird of Madagascar, though the myth could have easily been born by sailors accounts of large eagles capable of carrying off newborn lambs. Marco Polo, last I checked, is a pretty reputable dude, so I'm gonna take what he has to say pretty seriously. Clearly he was super scared of what this beast could do, and if he was so scared, that kinda makes me scared as well. Nowadays we know that these would've just been the birds from Madagascar or just great eagles. So this myth was kind of real, just not exactly how we thought. Number 5. The Honey Island Swamp Monster Now our first entry is gonna take us down to Louisiana, deep in the bayou, where all manner of sinister creatures are said to call their home. And there's a number of cryptids that live deep in the swamps. We got the Rougarou, the Night Folk, and the Honey Island Swamp Monster, beasts that got my attention right now. The Honey Island Swamp Monster is kind of like a Cajun cousin to Bigfoot. He's described as a gigantic bipedal furry monster resembling a hybrid of ape and man. The creature has been sighted and described dozens of times over through the years, but its initial sightings take us all the way back to the 1960s. This first documented report of old honey, as he sometimes likes to be called, comes from an air traffic controller who in his spare time took up wildlife photography and his favorite spot to snap pictures was in, yep, you guessed it, Honey Island up in eastern Louisiana. After his passing, when relatives were going through his belongings, they found a series of photos and reels of Super 8 film that were thought to contain this creature. Now he claimed that in his time photographing Honey Island Swamp, he had discovered trails of footprints of these giant feet that showed only four toes, and near these untraceable mystery prints were the bodies of boars who had been ravaged beyond recognition. Now normally I would just say that's probably just the night folk doing what night folk do best, but this definitely sounds like the work of a vicious cryptid. Now interestingly, there are some cryptozoologists out there who cast a little doubt on the Honey Island Swamp Monster. Not that they don't think he's real, mind you, but that they think he's a different cryptid called the Rougarou, which I mentioned all the way back 30 seconds ago if you remember that. Another Cajun cryptid that I love so much I couldn't resist sneaking it into this video like he didn't want to pay for a ticket. It's top 6 scary cryptids now. Can't stop me when I'm filming, I make the rules. The Rougarou is described to be similar to a werewolf, it's a giant wolf man who lives in the swamps, but he hunts those who disobey the rules of Lent, which is surprisingly a lot more pious than most werewolves are. Could both of these creatures be out there in the swamps having a little monster mash out there? And if you're looking for way more cryptid content, we have got loads of that on Top 5 Scary and then some. Cryptids not your jam? We got conspiracies, UFO sightings, stories too good to be true, and stories too true to be good. Click through, stay screaming, stay subscribed, but stay watching this video because we worked hard on it, okay? Moving on. Number 4. Oko Pogo. One of the most common types of cryptid is the lake monster. There is of course Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster, Champ, the lake monster from Lake Champlain, and Ishii, 
the Japanese lake monster. But for my pick, I'm going to be talking about the legendary creature who is said to reside in the depth of the Lake Okanagan in the Canadian province of British Columbia. It is known as the Ogopogo. This creature is closely tied with native myths, which told of a creature that they called Naatik, which translated to the water god or water demon. They believed that the creature demanded a sacrifice in exchange for safe passage across the lake. Because of this, the First Nations of the area would sacrifice small animals before entering the water. Stories tell of a visiting chief who refused to offer up a sacrifice as he did not believe in the creature. And as a result, when he and his family tried to cross the lake in their canoe, the creature used his long tail to whip up the surface of the lake and suck the canoe and its occupants down to the bottom of the lake. Ogo Pogo is often described as being a serpent-like creature, about 50 feet in length, with smooth, dark skin, who moves through the water at incredible speeds by coiling its body in vertical undulations and propelling itself forward with its powerful tail. Every year, there are reports from people claiming to see Ogo Pogo traveling across the Okanagan, with the usual grainy footage and blurry photos being given as proof of the creature's existence. In the 1980s, a cash reward was off by a local tourism agency if anyone could prove the beast was real. After harsh words from Greenpeace, they were forced to clarify that the proof must be videotaped, and that if found, the monster was not to be captured. The Ogo Pogo is officially listed as an endangered species, and is therefore protected from hunters. In one of the creature's most famous sightings, he was seen by 50 tourists who watched the Ogo Pogo for 45 minutes from the shore of a local beach, with one tourist being able to capture 10 seconds of 8mm film featuring the monster. Skeptics say that the sightings of the creature are usually groups of otters that are mistaken for one long creature rather than the several animals swimming together in a row. But regardless of the origin of this cryptid, or whether he is real or not, the Ogo Pogo has become a beloved tourist draw for the area, with the city of Kelowna, BC even having a statue of the creature as both a nod to local legend and a place for tourists to take their photo with the mythical creature. Number 3. El Chupacabra Since the 1970s, livestock farmers have said its name with a careful whisper, hushed tones under their breath. Is this creature even real, or is it just another tall tale that's gotten out of hand? The Chupacabra is a cryptid notorious across Latin America and the southwestern United States. Its name literally translates to goat sucker, which is hilarious, in reference to its vampiric feeding habits. Now, depending on who is telling the stories and where, interestingly enough, the Chupacabra's appearance varies fairly wildly. In Spanish-speaking countries like Puerto Rico, the Chupacabra is depicted as very alien in appearance. It's very reptilian, has like little bug eyes, and has spines running down its arm and its back. Now, alternatively, and this is the depiction I suspect more of you probably know it as, as this is the more North American, Southwestern version of it, the classic Chupacabra, if you'd like, is depicting it as a feral, canid-like creature, looking like a, a mutant dog, usually with missing chunks of fur, angry snarls, looks something more like out of Resident Evil than it would be an alien. I think it's very funny that these are the two speeds of Chupacabra. You have alien or weird dog. There's a small section of the cryptozoology community who suspect that these two might actually be two entirely different cryptids altogether, and we're conflating them, con complicating matters ever so slightly, but you know, that's an argument for the cryptid subreddit. <laughs> a lot of politics there, that's all I'll say. The first the first origins of the critter can be traced back to the 70s in Puerto Rico, when a string of mysterious, extremely violent livestock deaths were all happening around the country with no explanation for what had happened. These animals, primarily goats and sheep, would be found drained bone dry of their bodily fluids. That's why it's called the goat sucker. There are some experts who believe it's possible that the chupacabra could be sightings of a thought extinct species called the thylacine, and that's probably not how you pronounce that, I could have looked it up. Known more formally to his friends, as the Tasmanian tiger. It's a weird little critter that doesn't quite look like a cat, doesn't quite look like a dog, and is kind of somewhere in the middle. Very cute, but it's thought to be extinct, with its last remains being officially found in 2022. There are some skeptics and experts out there who wonder if perhaps this real life mythical beast could be what people have seen when they see the chupacabra. So what do you think, my delightful little comment section? Is the fabled chupacabra really out there terrorizing the lives of goats? Or would you have to be a sucker to believe that? Oh, because he sucks goats.
Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's what you gotta get down on the car ride home. Number two, the Goat Man of Maryland. Maryland is a beautiful state that a lot of important people over the years have called home. Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, Babe Ruth, and if you believe the folklore, the Maryland Goat Man. I've talked about the Maryland Goat Man a few times on this channel, and I'm very likely to talk about him a few more times because he's a cryptid who just can't be bleat. Like, beat? Because he's a goat. Oh! I'll see myself out. I'll, no, 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 there's more of me. The Goat Man is a villain straight out of a direct to DVD horror movie. Said to resemble a satyr, this Chronicles of Narnia extra haunts the woods of Maryland, hatchet in hand, ready to attack anyone who dares disturb its territory. Like any good cryptid, there's some variations depending on who's telling the story of what he looks like. Sometimes he's more humanoid with a human face and a furry body, whereas sometimes it's outright monstrous with a goat's head and bipedal looking like something out of a Greek myth. I greatly prefer the latter. The Goat Man has been a popular urban legend for a while now, with the earliest sightings and stories going all the way back to the 70s, when dogs around the area of Bowie, Maryland, were going missing at an alarming rate. Whispers came out about a malicious Goat Man who was stalking the woods, taking your pets as his prey, and these rumors caught on like wildfire, and the character became a very popular campfire story. You know, you'd see graffiti sprayed on the walls saying things like, Goat Man was here, or Goat Man is watching, remind you to behave. Now, Goat Man's possible backstories are far are too good to include. It's half the reason I have such a fondness for this cryptid. Depending on what Marylander you're talking to, you might hear that the Goat Man is a complete mystery. Just a strange goat demon who's bad to the bone. Or, if you want a way more colorful backstory like I know you do, then the Goat Man is the product of a mysterious mad scientist's experiment to... I, I don't know really. Do something with goats? Very possible this could be a Jeff Goldblum fly situation, somebody merged with a goat. Anyway, he escapes from the lab and he wreaks havoc on humanity and is said to mostly haunt lovers lane and go after teenagers and parked cars. I way prefer the backstory where he's a lab experiment and he's like a furry Jason Voorhees going after people smooching. Goat man, we absolutely love you. If you are watching, please feel free to reach out, DM top five scary. We would love to have you on the channel to do a collab. You can share your side of things. Number one, man bear pig. This next creature has been described as the most super serial threat to our planet. You see, there is something out there which threatens our very existence and may be the end to the human race as we know it. I'm talking, of course, about man bear pig. It is a creature which roams the earth alone. It is half man, half bear, and half pig. Some people say that man bear pig isn't real. Well, I'm here to tell you now. Man bear pig is very real, and he most certainly exists. I'm serial. Man bear pig doesn't care who you are or what you've done. Man bear pig simply wants to get you. I'm super serial. He is said to be a demon from hell that thrives on temptation and is known for making deals with societies, giving them nice cars and premium style ice cream, and then repaying the debt by unleashing unspeakable horrors and carnage upon the next generation. This deal was made by generations who knew the cost that the deal would have on their ancestors, but they were not expecting to live long enough to see the consequences of their actions. Man Bear Pig was recently responsible for a lethal series of attacks in Colorado, but Despite the brutality in front of them, many locals still refused to believe that such a creature could exist. There is a rumor that a new deal was offered by the demon, where the town could stave off annihilation if they could give up soy sauce and Red Dead Redemption 2. Of course, the town refused such an unfair offer, cause plain rice, bleh. They instead renegotiated the deal with Man Bear Pig so that he would simply return in five years and unleash his fury a thousandfold. How long do we have before Man Bear Pig returns? And is there anything we can do to stop him? If only we had taken Al Gore more serial. In at number five, we have skinwalkers. Rooted in indigenous folklore, skinwalkers are creepy creatures that terrify anyone who dares to get near them. According to Navajo legend, a skinwalker is a witch that is known for shapeshifting into any animal or living being in order to do harm. A skinwalker can be described as animalistic with their physical intelligence and are impossible to capture. These creatures mimic sounds that might draw someone's attention, like a loved one or a stranger asking for help. They do this to lure their victims and gain their trust before ultimately bringing
leading them to their own demise. The Skinwalker is a scary figure for indigenous people, and their presence is taken very seriously. Once the Skinwalker's true identity is revealed after capturing its victims, it is ultimately too late. This creature is so terrifying because our only understanding of them is to conquer our fear of them. What makes this even more frightening is the story of the Skinwalker Ranch. In 1996, a family of four moved into a cursed ranch. After just 18 months in their new home, they started to experience mysterious crop circles and mutilations of their cattle, and had sight of a mysterious large animal. This led the family to ultimately sell their ranch, but this didn't stop the sightings. Repeated cases of human-like creatures were documented at the ranch and surrounding area, leaving the case of the Skinwalker feeling even more real. In at number 4 we have Sirens. Often mistaken as mermaids, sirens are mythical creatures with the head and upper body of a female human and the lower body of a fish. These evil creatures live in the sea and have sharp teeth. Sirens appear in folklore from around the world and are directly associated with shipwrecks. They directly appear in Greek's oldest work of literature, with them being described as bewitching singers. By the end of the Greek period, they had concluded that these women were no more than fables, yet the legend of the sirens lived on for centuries after the Greek civilization crumbled away. Sirens can be considered one of the scariest mythical creatures because they are known for their intense beauty and luring attraction. Though don't be fooled by the beauty of a siren as they can use their physical appearance and enchanting songs to lead sailors to their demise. Sail too close to their neighboring island and you will quickly find out what makes them so scary. Before the sirens were known for their deadly singing and dangerous nature, they suffered greatly due to being cursed by Demeter and the Muses, and exiled to a small island where they were forced to live a life of loneliness. Therefore, it is possible that the sirens turn on men to avenge the wrongs against them. With modern and ancient reports of siren-like creatures being respotted, there is no solid proof of these claims, so it's known that humans have only explored 5% of the Earth's oceans, leaving the siren mystery still plausible. Moving on to number 3, we have Chimera which could be considered one of the most terrifying creatures in Greek mythology. The Chimera is a creature that came from Lucia, which was located in Asia Minor. Chimeras are described as having the head of a lion, a tail that looked like it belonged to a serpent, and the body of a goat. With the ability to breathe fire, and known to be maybe invincible, with the strength of a lion, the cunning of a goat, and the venom of a snake. This might be one of the more bizarre creatures out there, but don't be mistaken, it's definitely not one to overlook. The Chimera was also seen as an omen of sorts, as he often appeared before natural disasters, mostly volcanic eruptions. Additionally, the Chimera had a terrible temper and no civilized instincts. She ransacked many villages, mostly killing cattle, but sometimes destroying houses and innocent people. The origin of the Chimera is known as the twisted offspring of a monstrous snake named Typhon and his half-human bride. The name Chimera is derived from a Greek word that translates to she-goat or monster, which is fitting for the creature. The most famous story of the Chimera is the tale of Bellerophon, who rode into battle against her on the back of the winged horse Pegasus. Bellerophon managed to drive a lance down the beast's throat right before it could burn him with a fireball, ultimately leading to the creature's end. In at number 2 we have the Wendigo. You may recognize the name, but do you know just how scary the Wendigos are? Well, Wendigos were known to be a man-eating monster that roamed the land near the Great Lakes. Physically they can be described with pale skin, prominent ribs, and sunken eyes. They had the appearance of a malnourished man, though what makes the Wendigo so terrifying is that they never feel full after a meal, leaving them to attack anything and everything they come across for a quick meal. The legend of the Wendigo lurking in the forest is a scary thaw, and knowing that they are cursed to wander the land, eternally seeking to fill the void of their appetite in infecting others is even more terrifying. This creature belongs to the spiritual traditions of the Algonquin speaking indigenous in North America. According to legends, a human becomes a Wendigo after their spirit is tainted by greed or weakness by extreme conditions, and becomes possessed by a prowling spirit during the time of weakness. One could take away from the legend of the Wendigo from its beliefs, social structure, and traditions of three indigenous people telling these stories. The legend serves as a reminder of the importance of community, and what happens to an individual when they are left outside of the community. The story of the Wendigo highlights the importance of sharing 
sharing and need for cooperation when it comes to surviving as a species. And finally, in at number one, we have the Kraken. Known for its large size and roaming the ocean, the Kraken could be considered the largest and most dangerous creature in the sea. The monster can stretch out as far across as 10 warships side by side, and is considered the biggest monster in the sea, with giant tentacles that could pull a ship and its crew to their last breath. Even if it were to not attack you, the Kraken is so powerful by nature that the whirlpool it would create by diving below the water would be so massive, it could potentially sink a whole fleet underwater. Being such a big creature also brings a big appetite, where he will destroy any ship and marine life he comes across. Even though the Kraken is one of the laziest mythical creatures, with its size, it is rightly one of the most feared monsters. When facing a Kraken, you will notice bubbling in the water and scattering of marine life, as if everything in the ocean had to flee drastically, knowing something dangerous was coming. Any sailor who dares to want to survive their interaction with a Kraken must get as far away as possible, if it's not too late. In the 18th century, the Norwegian bishop Erik Pontepidden insisted that the Kraken was real, and had stated to have recalled seeing it on multiple occasions. Pontepidden described the creature as the largest and most most surprising of all the animal creations. The fisherman also stated that it has a strong and peculiar scent, which it can emit at certain times, and by means of which it beguiles, and by means of which it beguiles and draws other fish to come in heaps with it. There is a documentation of this scary monster ruling the seas since the 13th century. The Kraken ranks top among mythical creatures for centuries for its sheer strength and size. This creature can be considered the largest monster ever imagined by mankind. While there has not been any proof of the Kraken to exist, this, the ocean holds many real creatures similar, such as giant squids being documented and discovered by scientists which can grow to be 600 pounds. In at number 5 we have Wei Chivo. The Wei Chivo is known as the Spirit of Midnight, and originated around the Mayan town of Yucatecan. This creature is said to roam the mountains during the night and has a human body but a goat's head and legs, like a billy goat on two legs, which is the typical image of the devil according to the Mayan people. The Wei Chivo has big twisted horns, large strong legs and dangerously sharp claws, along with a long beard, hairy chest and scary red eyes. These terrifying creatures can possess human intelligence, has a massive amount of strength and can move extremely quick. The Wei Chivo is said to have dreadful moans, thunderous laughter, insults its prey and quenches its thirst with goat's blood. It is extremely evil, hates the light and worships darkness. Their mission is to punish men for their sins, and if anyone speaks his name or reports his misdeeds, they will burn in the mouth of their victims, so they can never utter his name again. The Wei Chivo also loves to devour humans, especially children. There's a popular story of one of the first encounters with the beast. When a young man was on his way to visit his girlfriend in the town of Mukuchi, on his way a being appeared on the road, and it was a half baby goat, half demon, black in colour with bulging and flashing red eyes. The man tried to defend himself but ended up on the ground unconscious. The next morning he was found by a stranger and for several days after the incident he suffered from vomiting and a high fever. He became delirious and repeated the words Wei Chivo. According to some witnesses of the creature, they they said they saw a trail of blood that followed behind the beast. The Wei Chivo is a popular mythological creature in the Mayan community, with locals as well as all over Mexico. The stories have been told throughout generations. In the Mayan town of Valladolid in Yucatan, the locals believe this creature is an evil sorcerer that is capable of transforming into a goat-like creature and wreaking havoc on the locals and their livestock. In at number 4 we have El Nahul. The legend of El Nahul is over 500 years old and is told by many around Mexico including the Aztecs, Toltecs, Mixies, Mayans and the Yakus just to name a few. This creature can appear in many areas of the country because its home is the heart of humans. The El Nahul is half human and half beast and is a sorcerer that transforms at night into an animal, often a black dog or a jaguar. It eats cattle and children's blood but it thrives on people's fears, desires and hatred. It has glowing red eyes and emits fear in its victims with its terrifying laughter and grunts. They have the power to metamorphose, hypnotize, bewitch and can cause illness and death. In the Mexican worldview, the Nihuls were believed to be protected by Tezcatlipoca, the lord of the night. Legend has it that this creature could shed its skin and become an earthly creature. Mican and Spanish hunters claim that during the night they had killed an animal and at dawn the corpse had been transformed into a man. This made people in Mexico believe that these creatures were sorcerers with the ability to become half man and half animal. The word Nihul is of Nihutl origin, which translates to what is my garment or skin. The El Nihuls have the ability to choose their powers for good or evil, but 
tend to get more joy out of being evil and causing destructions. They stalk their prey during the night in a man-eating, mass murderers, thieves, and thrive on using their dark magic to overpower the weak. In at number three, we have Sinsamito. The Sinsamito is another creature coming from the Mayan people and can be translated to the devil, and consists of many different nicknames, including Lord of Animals, the Savage Jungle Monster, and the Powerful Guardians of the Hill. This creature's story has been told for over 20 centuries by many all over Mexico. The Sinsamito tends to live in caves deep in the mountains, near forests and jungles, but wander at night around the nearby villages. The Sinsamito is a muscular gorilla with human features and a man or woman's face, long hair on its head with thick brown hair all over its body, similar to a bear. Their feet are large, double the size of a human's and are upside down. The creature's toes are spread apart and crooked backwards so they can't run, so they hop around using the support of a tree trunk, like a cane. It feeds on wild fruits, ashes of bonfires and human flesh, and when they are in attack mode they have horrific panting sounds that sounds like thunder and screams that pierce the entire jungle. The Sinsamito is a creature that terrifies the Mayan people because it knows how to speak their language, and is immune to bullets and arrows. This creature's mission is to guard their home, which is the mountains, to terrorize the locals in the nearby villages and kill the men and kidnap the women whenever they can. These creatures are also legends and talked about by many in other places like Honduras and Belize. In Honduras, the people believe that they will hunt for women to kidnap, they find one to fall in love with, and then will claim that woman as their own and she will never be seen again. In Belize, the Sintomito feasts on humans, and the belief is that if you're a man and you look at the beast in the eyes and are able to escape, then you have a 100% chance that they will die within the month. If you're a woman and you look at the beast in the eyes and they manage to escape, your life will be prolonged. Better to be a woman, I guess. In at number two, we have Tukakami. The Tukakami originated from the indigenous people of Mexico. The Huichol in their language, Tukamami translates to the devil. The Huichol has talked about the Tukamami creature for centuries, and with each generation, the story of this creature is passed on. The Huichol people reside in Sierra Madre Occidental Range in the states of Nayarit, Jalisco, Zacatecas, and Durango, as well as in the United States. This ghoulish demon is the grandson of Uster, who is the goddess of the underworld who devours the dead and a distant relative of all vampires that exist. They reside in the underworld, but they also haunt the desert during the new moon and appear in the hallucinations produced by peyote. Peyote is a small cactus and is used in many Native American religious ceremonies, especially among the Huachal people and can cause hallucinations, and this terrifying creature knows this and takes advantage of it. This creature appears as a human body, but sometimes looks like a skeleton or a wolf-like creature. It's black and white stripes and it's always bloodstained. Its face is painted like a horrific mask with dirty white spots. Has buzzard or bat like wings and has massive horns on its heads like a devil. The creature's mission is to become the rule of the underworld and it thrives off being a cannibal and scavenger to suck up bones, clean corpses and snatch souls. The Tukukami feed on human flesh and they never bathe or drink water so if their appearance doesn't terrify you, their stench will. It also has the power to cause its victims dementia and use it as a weapon. They're devious, sneaky and extremely dangerous. Even though this demonic creature is mythical, it's very real in the eyes of the Huachol people and many around Mexico. There have been many Many sightings throughout history, and the story of Tukakami lives on to this day. And finally, in at number one, we have Chupacabra. The Chupacabra is a legendary creature known all over the world, but it originated in Mexico. It was first sighted in Puerto Rico, and it's believed to attack and drink the blood of livestock. The Chupacabra is a legendary creature known all over the world, but it originated in Mexico. It is believed to attack and drink the blood of livestock, especially goats. Chupacabra literally translate as goat sucker. This blood sucking creature varies in appearance. Some say it looks like a large hairless dog, while others say it looks like an alien-like reptile and is the size of a small bear, with rows of spines reaching from the neck to the base of the tail. The most popular reports say this creature has leathery or scaly greenish grey skin and sharp spines or quills running down its back. It is said to be four feet high and stand and hop, similar to a kangaroo. Sightings have been reported in many parts of Mexico, and some in Puerto Rico since the 1970s. This creature has been seen as far as north as Maine and as far as south as Chile, and even outside of the US in parts of Russia and the Philippines. A five year investigation was done by Benjamin Radford that was documented throughout this book, Tracking the Chupacabra, and he had concluded that the description given by the original eyewitnesses, Madeline Tolentino, was based on a creature in the 1995 science fiction horror movie Species. The alien creature, Sill, is nearly identical to the description given by Madeline, and she claims to have seen the movie before. It was concluded at the end of Benjamin's investigation that he seriously undermines the credibility of the Chupacabra as a real animal. In October of 2010, University 
of Michigan biologist Barry O'Connor concluded that all of the chupacabra reports in the United States were simply coyotes infected with a parasite, which would explain most of the features of the chupacabra because they would be left with little fur, thickened skin, and a disgusting odor. There were also reports of stray Mexican hairless dogs being mistaken for these creatures. All of this doesn't stop the constant stories and sightings seen throughout Mexico and all over the world, and the story of the chupacabra continues to be told and is said to be the most well known mythological creature that comes from Mexico. Number five on this list is the human Z. The human Z, as you can imagine, is a human mixed with a chimpanzee. This is a very interesting entry on this list because whether or not it has actually been created or not is up for debate. Science Alert says a prominent US scientist has claimed researchers in Florida succeeded in breeding a human chimp hybrid called a human Z in controversial, long rumored 1920s research. Evolutionary psychologist Gordon G. Gallup Jr., who achieved renown for his pioneering mirror self recognition experiments with animals in the 1970s, says a former university. University professor told him the hybrid creature was born at an animal research laboratory where he once worked. One of the most interesting cases involved an attempt which was made back in the 1920s in what was the first primate research center established in the US in Orange Park, Florida, Gallup told The Sun. They inseminated a female chimpanzee with human semen from an undisclosed donor and claimed not only that pregnancy occurred, but the pregnancy went full term and resulted in a live birth. There's little reason to think such an experiment successfully took place and plenty of reasons to believe it didn't, but having an otherwise respected researcher make such a statement is drawing attention to this old rumor once again. It's definitely interesting to see a highly respected scientist in the community come out and make these claims like this. That does tend to carry a decent amount of weight and at the very least deserves to be investigated a little bit. It was also rumored that a few years ago some people came forward requesting government approval to do an experiment like this, but it was denied. Denied. So there's definitely been rumblings about an experiment like this before, but no definitive proof that it's actually taken place. To be completely honest, I do believe that something like this has went down. I just think that it may have happened behind closed doors, and we may not be privy to it. Like this totally seems like something that the government could be interested in, but wouldn't want the public to find out about. Maybe in some secret base in some very low population part of the world, there is a human Z running around getting experimented on. Number four on this list is the human pig. So as we are going to see from this one, there are a lot of possible benefits from this, but also a ton of moral and ethical questions that pop up. Pagista says, the first human pig hybrid embryo has been created in the lab and it represents a major step forward in the field of regenerative medicine. This news comes from a team of researchers at the Salk Institute who were able to successfully grow human cells inside of a pig embryo for the first time ever. While this may sound like something out of a science fiction novel, the potential implications are actually quite significant. This achievement could one day lead to the creation of transplant organs for humans that are made from animal tissue. This would be an incredible breakthrough for those suffering from organ failure as there would no longer need to be a wait for a human donor. Of course, there is still a long way to go before this technology is ready for clinical use. The next step will be to see if these hybrid embryos can develop into healthy adults. But even if that proves to be possible, it will be many years before we see anything like this being used in patients. So here is the thing with this. Yes, it would be awesome to be able to have a steady supply of usable organs to give to people who are suffering or need another one. So many people die from not having enough transplantable organs and this is a problem that needs to be addressed. However, this also raises the question, what about the human pigs? These are going to be half human creatures that are going to be bred for the specific purpose of having their organs harvested. This is clearly a very polarizing issue and something that people a lot smarter than me, they need to look into. Comment down below what you think about this potential innovation and how you think we should proceed. Number three on this list is the Jag Lion. 
Now in all honesty, this is more cool than it is terrifying, but I still wanted to include at least one relatively cool thing on the list. Also too, if you did run into this thing in the wild, then I can promise you it would be very scary. So, I think it still qualifies. Pajusta says, a jag lion hybrid is a cross between a male jaguar and a female lion. The result is an animal with characteristics of both parent species, although it's usually more similar to the lion in appearance. Jag lions are not currently found in the wild, but several have been born in captivity. The jag lion was first created in 2006 when a male jaguar named Elvis was bred with a female lion named Lola at the exceptional animal park located in Phoenix, Arizona, USA. The two big cats mated successfully and Lola gave birth to six healthy jag lion cubs. Since then, several other jag lions have been born in zoos around the world. These hybrids are not only interesting to look at, they also help scientists to learn more about the genetics of both lions and jaguars. So, like I said, this thing is really cool, but could also be very scary depending on where and how you run into it. In the zoo, where there's a large protective piece of glass between the two of you, not very scary at all. Totally cool. In the jungle, where there is no protective glass and this creature is very hungry, not cool, very scary. Good thing that there really isn't any of these creatures at the wild at the moment, so running into one outside of captivity would be very, very hard, but... You never know. Number two on this list is the Wolfen. Breeding one of the most intelligent creatures with one of the deadliest. Sounds like a great idea. That's what happened here with the Wolfen. Pagistus says, weird hybrid experiments usually make for interesting reading and the Wolfen is no different. This unusual creature is actually a cross between a false killer whale and an Atlantic bottlenose dolphin and was first discovered back in 1985. Since then, there have been several documented cases of Wolfens in the wild and even a few captive ones as well. While they share many characteristics with both of their parent species, there are some notable differences that make the wolfen truly unique. For one, they are typically smaller than either false killer whales or bottlenose dolphins with an average length of just over six feet. They also have a more slender build and their flippers are shorter in proportion to their body than either parent species. Interestingly, wolfens also seem to exhibit social behaviors that are more similar to dolphins than whales. They are often seen forming close bonds with other members of their pod and engaging in activities such as surfing and playfully chasing each other around. It would be very rare to spot this creature in the wild, but be very careful if you do. Dolphins are super smart, and killer whales, well, they're killers. This is one of the most intelligent and also deadliest animals in the ocean, and therefore, you need to tread carefully around it. And finally, number one on this list is the human mouse. The human mouse is another one of those ones with potential positives, but also lots of ethical questions. Pachista says, in a first of its kind study, scientists have created a mouse embryo that contains human cells. The research published in the journal Nature could eventually lead to the development of new treatments for diseases using stem cells. To create the hybrid embryo, the researchers injected human stem cells into a mouse embryo. The human cells then began to grow and form structures that are found in the human brain and heart. The researchers say that the human cells were able to survive and grow because they were surrounded by mouse cells. This suggests that it may be possible to create hybrid embryos that contain a mix of human and animal cells. The study is still in its early stages and it remains to be seen whether these hybrid embryos will be able to develop into healthy animals. However, the findings suggest that it may be one day possible to use stem cells from patients with diseases to create customized treatments. So yeah, again, tons of possible benefits for people who are going through some rough treatments right now, but also we're gonna have a mouse that's almost as smart as us humans acting as a test dummy for us. This is uncharted territory for humans and understanding exactly how to go about it it's something that we're gonna need to discover along the way. Number five on this list is the Gila Monster. This is a real life creature that's literally named Monster. Like, what? The San Diego Zoo says, as the name might suggest, the Gila Monster has one of the worst reputations in the reptile world. 
This lizard is often feared and has been described as frightful and repulsive, especially in local folklore. It's been accused of many things such as spitting venom, leaping several feet in the air to attack, stinging with its tongue, and killing people with gusts of poisonous breath. We're glad you're reading this to learn the truth about these interesting lizards. Kiva monsters are heavy-bodied lizards covered with bead-like scales called ostoderms that are black and yellow or pink covering all but their belly. The Gila monster is venomous. Its venom is made up by a row of glands in the lizard's lower jaw. When the lizard bites, small grooves in the teeth help the venom flow into its prey. The bite of a Gila monster is very strong and the lizard may not loosen its grip for several seconds. It may even chew so that the venom goes deeper into the wound. So what are the positives here? Well, there aren't really that many, but what's kind of the light at the end of the tunnel? Well, this poison usually doesn't kill humans, keyword being usually there. It will, however, be extremely painful and could paralyze you. Then, if you're paralyzed and you're out in the middle of the desert, well, death could come from a number of different ways at that point. Running into one of these things would definitely not be in your best interest. Number four on this list is the Indian Saw Scaled Viper. Our first snake on this list, guys. You guys knew that there had to be a few of them popping up here. This is something that you really don't want to pop up in the desert, though. CN Traveler says, While plenty of snake species pack enough venom to bring down a human, not all of them take the multifaceted approach of the Indian Saw Scaled Viper. Sometimes called the Little Indian Viper or the Saw Scaled Viper, these reptiles live in some of the most populated areas of the region they occupy, which stretches well beyond India. They remain inconspicuous, though, by using their natural camouflage to blend into desert surroundings. Because they are typically active at night, it's best to listen for their defensive sizzling sound. This comes from a behavior called stridulation, in which the snake forms coils and rubs its scales together. Even with a warning, saw-scaled vipers are extremely aggressive, with more than double a lethal dose in each bite. Now, luckily for us, there is an anti-venom for this snake, but if you don't get it fast enough, then it slides out. What's really not great about these little guys is how aggressive they are. Like, you could just be walking through the desert, minding your own business, and then, boom, out from behind a rock, this scaled viper leaps out, and that's it, you're toast. Snakes are scary, guys, especially the ones that are super aggressive. Number three on this list is the Arizona Bark Scorpion. Ever since I was a kid, scorpions have just been a big no for me. Like, they don't really look like something that should be in this world, really. Wikipedia says, The Arizona Bark Scorpion is a small, light brown scorpion common to the Sonaran Desert in the southwestern United States and northwestern Mexico. An adult male can reach 8 centimeters in length, while a female is slightly smaller with a maximum length of 7 centimeters. The Arizona Bark Scorpion is the most venomous scorpion in North America, and its venom can cause severe pain, coupled with numbness, tingling, and vomiting in adult humans, typically lasting between 24 and 72 hours. Temporary dysfunction in the area stung is common, like a hand or possibly an arm can be immobilized or experience convulsions. It also may cause loss of breath for a short time. Due to the extreme pain induced, many victims describe sensations of electrical jolts after envenomation. Guys, could you imagine being stuck like that for 72 hours? That would be the most excruciating 72 hours of your life. Think about how badly you'd want to just fast forward life and get through that. And that's if you manage to survive the whole experience, which some people aren't even capable of doing. Number two on this list is the Inland Typhon. This thing is a born bred killer and not what you want to come across in the desert. Wikipedia says, the inland typen, also commonly known as the western typen, the small-scaled snake or the fierce snake, the species is endemic to a semi-arid regions of Central East Australia. Aboriginal Australians living in those regions named the snake Dendarabilia. It was first described by Frederick McCoy in 1879 and then by William John McClay in 1882, but for the next 90 years it was a mystery to the scientific community no further specimens were found, and virtually nothing was added to the knowledge of this species until its rediscovery in 1972. Based on the median lethal dose value in mice, the venom of the inland typhon is by far the most toxic of any snake, 
much more so than even that of sea snakes, and it has the most toxic venom of any reptile when tested on human heart cell culture. The Inland Taipan is a specialist hunter of mammals, so its venom is specially adapted to kill warm-blooded species. It is estimated that one bite possesses enough lethality to kill at least 100 fully grown humans. It is an extremely fast and agile snake that can strike instantly with extreme accuracy, often striking multiple times in the same attack, and it will poison in almost every case. One bite kills over 100 adult humans. Are you actually kidding me? Think about how insane that is. Like literally a milliliter of this stuff gets into your blood and that's it, game over. Body enters complete shutdown mode. It's also crazy fast and agile, so trying to fight this thing without getting bitten probably isn't an option. You'd need to fight it perfectly to escape unscathed. This thing doesn't even seem like something from this planet. Like I get some serious boss fight vibes from this snake. Luckily there isn't too many of them around and you would need to go deep into some deserts to find them. Maybe don't do that though, cause the outcome of finding one might not be the best. And finally number one on this list is the Six-Eyed Sand Spider. So already this thing has a leg up on the competition because it has six eyes and that's pretty freaking scary. Animal Corner says, The six-eyed sand spider is a medium-sized spider found in deserts and other sandy places in southern Africa. It is a member of the Sakaridae family, and close relatives of this spider are sometimes found in both Africa and in South America. Its nearest relatives are the recluse spiders, which are found worldwide. The six-eyed sand spider is also known as the six-eyed crab spider due to its flattened stance and ladder-grade legs. The venom of this spider's bite is said to be one of the most dangerous on record. Over 38,000 species of six-eyed sand spiders have been identified, however, because of their great ability for hiding, it's believed that about 200,000 species exist. So there are tons of these things and they also have the deadliest venom. Great, just absolutely fantastic. I love that for us. Don't know if you guys can tell, but there is some serious sarcasm going on in my voice right now. Spiders are personally my least favorite animal on the planet and considering this particular one has six eyeballs and is super deadly, it's gonna be number one on my list. Number five on this list is the Michigan Dogman. The Michigan Dogman is a scary urban legend of a creature from, yeah, you guessed it, Michigan. It is a massive seven foot tall beast that stands on two legs and looks a bit like a canine, however it's got the torso of a man. One thing that's very notable about this fearsome creature is its extremely loud human scream that it lets out before it's coming to strike. The first sighting of it was back in 1887, and since then there's been many more sightings all in different regions of Michigan. What's interesting about this creature though is that you won't need to worry about running into it for at least a few more years. I can guarantee that you don't want to be walking around the forest and having this thing appear in front of you, but the good thing is that you don't need to worry about that until 2027. It's believed that this creature only appears in years that end with seven. During that year, it will be out and about in the forests of Michigan, hunting and preying on the victims that it finds. But whenever it isn't a year that ends in seven, it's in a deep slumber hidden somewhere in the state. If this thing was awake all the time, it very easily could be higher on this list because of how terrifying and deadly it can be. But because it's usually asleep, I'm not having it so high up. That being said though, still be careful if you're in a Michigan forest regardless of the year because I can only imagine that accidentally waking this thing up would probably be very bad for everybody involved. Number four on this list is the Amazonian giant centipede. Centipedes are gross guys. In fact, the only thing that might be grosser than a centipede is a millipede. The centipede that we're looking at today is a very real animal that isn't just gross, but it's flat out scary and dangerous. World Atlas says, The Peruvian giant yellow leg centipede, or the Amazonian giant centipede, is one of the largest centipede species in the world. The creature is about 30 centimeters long and preys on a large variety of animals. Interestingly, the centipede's diet is based not only on other invertebrates, but it can also overpower and kill creatures larger than it in size like lizards, snakes, frogs, mice, bats, and sparrow-sized birds. The centipede's primary weapons for killing prey are a pair of modified legs. The centipede uses these legs to penetrate the body of the victim and inject a highly toxic venom into their bloodstream. 
The killer creature can even climb the ceilings of caves where they can hold and manipulate their prey like bats with only a few legs attached to the ceiling. A four-year-old human child was reported to have been killed by the centipede venoms before. So not only can this scary arthropod kill people with its venom, but it's super difficult to fight. That's because it's extremely fast, guys. Having 100 legs means that you can move pretty quickly, and this thing definitely does. It can move up to 3 feet per second, which is really fast considering its size. Also, the nature of its body means that it can crawl into super small crevices that you might not see. The child who died from its venom actually happened to run into this thing in an empty soda can. The kid picked up the can not realizing what was inside, and then the centipede struck. Running into this thing in the forest, or honestly anywhere, would be really horrible. If you see an Amazonian giant centipede, then just walk the other direction. Number three on this list is the skinwalkers. Skinwalkers, as described by All That's Interesting, are animalistic humanoid creatures chronicled in the centuries-old folklore of various Native American tribes of the United States Southwest, most notably the Navajo, Pueblo, Apache, and Hopi's people. It is one of many shape-shifting monsters from Native American legends. Skinwalkers are typically described with a beastly and deformed body, a marred, albeit humanoid face, and blazing orange-red eyes. But the origins of these creatures vary among tribal cultures. Some traditions say skinwalkers are powerful medicine men who succumb to the temptation of using their abilities for evil. Other traditions claim that the skinwalkers are the punitive form of any man, woman, or child who commits a deep sin. In any case, the myth of the skinwalkers is well known among indigenous communities. These Native American monsters are described as incredibly powerful and nearly immortal. They can only be killed with a bullet or knife dipped in white ash, a bit reminiscent of a shapeshifter from popular culture, the werewolf and its weakness to silver bullets. Shape-shifting animal, human beasts who are extremely difficult to kill and super athletic. These things are very dangerous and not a species that you want to mess with. Typically residing in the forested areas of northern United States and Canada, they often travel in groups, which just kind of adds to how absolutely dead you are if you do happen across some. Be very careful of the skinwalkers if you're trekking through some North American forests. Number two on this list is an electric eel. So you won't be finding an electric eel in any northern forests like Canada, where I live, which is honestly pretty good for me. But if you live in the Amazon and happen to be going through an Amazon forest, then it's very likely this creature will be in the rivers right next to you. Definitely do not go for a dip in those rivers though, because the electric eel might be waiting for you. World Atlas says a shocking danger lurks beneath the waters of Amazon River in Brazil. The electric eel is not a true eel, but actually a knife fish capable of delivering a massive electric shock to those who threaten it. Three pairs of abdominal organs of the fish allow it to generate electricity enough to stun an adult human being. The eels use their electricity generating capacity to stun prey before consuming them. Fatal attacks on humans are rare, but not completely non-existent. A single jolt could stun a human being enough to cause the person to stop breathing and drown even in shallow water. Multiple shocks could definitely trigger respiratory failure in humans. In the past, there are cases where the fish have delivered shocks strong enough to kill horses and even stun an adult caiman. If this fish can literally kill a horse, then we don't stand a chance, folks. There also literally isn't anything you can do about this thing other than just get out of the water. Like, it might be able to shock you without even touching you, so you might not even know that you're in danger. These things are also super gross looking and just not appealing as an animal at all. Super cool that they have electrical abilities, but not super cool if they use those abilities on me or you. And number one on this list is the Cherokee Horned Serpent. This is another Native American legend similar to the Skinwalkers, but this one is arguably far more dangerous. Another name for the Cherokee Horned Serpent is Euctina. The Euctina was, as you might imagine, a legend that originated from the Cherokee tribe in Western North Carolina. James Mooney, somebody who actually studied the Cherokee tribe, wrote about this beast in a book he published back in 1992. 
He wrote, Those who know say that the Yuktana is a great snake as large around as a tree trunk with horns on its head and a bright blazing crest with a diamond upon its forehead and scales glittering like sparks of fire. The blazing diamond is called Yulamsoti, transparent and he who can win it may become the greatest wonder worker of the tribe. Still, it is worth a man's life to attempt it, for whoever is seen by the Yuktana is so dazed by the bright light that he runs toward the snake instead of trying to escape. This diamond is so dazzling that it's going to draw you in and it's very problematic. You are going to lose if you fight this creature. It is just so strong and so powerful that unless you're literally an Avenger, you're just simply not going to stand a chance. It's said that these beasts are born out of envy and jealousy and come from the underworld. Massive serpents with incredible powers that literally come from hell. These things might just be lurking around the forest near you, hugging onto a tree and waiting for somebody to come and try to take the diamond in their forehead. There are rumors that one warrior was actually able to defeat these beasts at some point, but that is honestly just a rumor and never been confirmed. Be very, very careful if you're walking around a North American forest by yourself, and if you see a diamond, just run. Number five on this list is the werewolf. Werewolves originated in Eastern Europe. They were first seen and reported in countries like Hungary, Romania, and the Balkans. That was a long time ago, and the creatures have evolved and become far more widespread. These are not simply European dwellers anymore, my friends. If you think that America is werewolf-free, then think again. Werewolves have actually been in America for quite some time. PenLive writes, Mostly in northwestern Pennsylvania, some of the reports date back to the early 1960s, while others have been as recent as 2014. Most of those reported sightings estimate a dogman to be about 7 feet tall when standing or walking on its hind legs, three or four feet at the shoulder when on all fours. It's described as very muscular and weighing 400 to 500 pounds. Some reports portray it as entirely covered by hair, while others claim it to be a man with a wolf's head. In general, the dogman is reported as being much more aggressive than other undiscovered creatures. It seems to be spotted regularly at large, freshly killing prey like deer, and it has a reputation of confronting and menacing humans who encounter it. In Michigan, reports of the creature have been traced as far back as the 1794 journal of a French fur trader who described it as Lou Garou, which is French for werewolf. Algonquin legend includes references to similar creatures as well. These werewolves have been here for quite a while and they're still very active. The American woods have a lot of scary creatures and werewolves are one of them. Number four on this list is the cottonmouth snake. This is a very real creature that you do not want to run into. Live Science writes, Cottonmouths, also called water moccasins, are venomous snakes found in the southeastern United States. They're called cottonmouths because of the white coloration on the inside of their mouths, which they display when threatened. Cottonmouths are semi-aquatic, so they're comfortable both swimming in water and basking on land. They're the only venomous snake in the US that spends a lot of time in the water. Live Science previously reported, they're the only venomous snake in the US that spends a lot of time in the water. Other local names for cottonmouths include black moccasins, gapers, mangrove rattlers, snap jaws, stub tail snakes, swamp lions, trap jaws, water mambas, and water pilots. Cottonmouths are pit vipers, as are copperheads and rattlesnakes, according to Sarah Vernum, a herpetologist based in Portland, Oregon. Like all pit vipers, cottonmouths have heat-seizing facial pits between their eyes and nostrils, Vernum says. These specialized pits are able to detect minute differences in temperature so that the snake can accurately strike the source of heat, which is often potential prey. That's a great little excerpt from Live Science, kind of detailing the basics about these cottonmouth snakes. What they fail to bring up though, and why this snake made the list of terrifying creatures, is because this snake is the most poisonous snake in all of America. This bite will definitely incapacitate you, and it's very likely that you're going to die if you don't get the antidote very quickly. It's going to be super hard for you to get the antidote though, because the poison acts fast and you might not be able to move. Most often than not, people that die from these snakes actually die from drowning. Because these snakes prefer to be in the water, people will often get bit while they're swimming, and then won't be able to have the strength or ability to swim to shore before drowning right there. There's a reason to be worried about cryptids and urban legends, but don't be fooled folks. We have some super scary, super dangerous creatures in our world that people run into on a daily basis. 
The cottonmouth is one of the scariest ones in America. Number three on this list is the Ohio Grassman. Now this is one that you haven't probably heard about before. Everyone's heard of Bigfoot and the legends surrounding that legendary creature, but the Grassman hardly ever gets talked about, and it should. Cryptid Wiki writes, the Grassman is a tall bipedal hominid that stalks the woods of Ohio, hence the name Ohio Grassman. It is reportedly very similar to Bigfoot. It seems to be much more aggressive than any other Sasquatch species though. The Grassman gets its name from the small hut-like living structures or nests it builds out of tall grass. The first prominent sighting of the Grassman occurred in the small village of Minerva, Ohio in August 1978 when the grandchildren of Minerva residents Evelyn and Hal Clayton along with their friends ran inside screaming about a hairy monster they saw in the gravel pit outside. When the couple went out to investigate they saw what the children were crying about. It was covered in dark matted hair sitting in the pit and fiddling with discarded trash. It was estimated to be about 300 pounds. This isn't the only time that people have run into this massive cryptid. There are stories where people are out walking their dogs in the woods and this creature attacks. Lots of those stories have ended up with the dog not being able to walk away from the situation. No one knows if this creature is real or not. It could just be a massive bear that people have mistakenly took as something else, but by the way it operates, it's incredibly aggressive, and the way it makes its home into a hut-like structure, like, these are all unique qualities that I don't think would apply to a bear. It makes me think that it isn't that or something else, but that whatever killed these dogs, whatever scared these people, I mean, it could be the grass man. Lucky for most of us, it seems to only reside in Ohio, so if you don't live in Ohio, then you should be fine, but if you do, then definitely watch the heck out. Number two on this list is the Big Muddy Monster. The name, the Big Muddy monster doesn't really strike a whole lot of fear into those that hear it, but it definitely should. Atlas Obscura says Murfreesboro, Illinois has repeated sightings of the Big Muddy Monster. Many believe it may be related to the Creve Coeur monster sighted near the St. Louis suburb. This is an animal often linked to Sasquatch in size and appearance, but with a distinct skunky smell. Those who believe the two cryptids are the same surmise that the animal swam down the Big Muddy River in Murfreesboro to the Mississippi River and thence north to the Missouri River by which it swam to a bend in the river near Crevcore. This is a big legend in Illinois, guys. One of the biggest urban legends, actually. It's part of the Murfreesboro culture at this point and something that the locals all know and fear. 1973 was when it was at its height and its reign of terror cast a dark shadow over the town. Since then, the sightings have become fewer and more unlikely, but people still believe it to be around and lurking here. Be very careful of this beast if you ever are in Illinois. And finally, number one on this list is the Oklahoma octopus. So obviously the octopus is a real creature, one that I actually think is pretty cool. They get significantly less cool though when they start killing people. There's a legend of an octopus in Oklahoma that does exactly that. Lake Thunderbird, Lake Ten Killer, and Ulaga Lake are apparently the home of this killer octopus, and swimmers in this area have all suffered its wrath at one point or another. For whatever reason, these lakes have an incredibly high mortality rate among swimmers. Like, way higher than any other bodies of water around the area. These lakes aren't particularly dangerous in any way either. Like they don't have strong currents or anything like that that would make it easy for somebody to drown, so why is this happening? Well, people have spotted in the depths of these lakes a tentacled creature that they believe to be the cause of this death. Octopi aren't typically known for living in freshwater areas, but it can happen and it's not impossible. If a big one has taken up residence in these lakes, then it could be the reason why swimmers keep drowning here. I also want to point out that some of the swimmers who have gone under are very experienced swimmers and their friends have said that Drowning by themselves without some type of outside entity would have been very unlikely for them. Octopus or not, stay away from these lakes. Number five on this list is El Chupacabra. You guys should know who El Chupicabra is by this point, considering we've talked about this creature tons on this channel before. Basically, it is a legendary creature in the Central Americas that's said to drink the blood of livestock. Although this creature seems like it's probably fake, it might be real. Just not exactly how we might expect it to be. Carolyn Betchia says, We are taught from an early age, don't approach scary looking dogs. And while no one can get a clear picture, picture of Bigfoot, the Kraken, or the Loch Ness Monster, there is one monster that is oddly not camera shy. 
the legendary El Chupacabra. The Chupacabra was first sighted in Puerto Rico in the 70s. A wave of sightings followed in the late 1990s. During this time, livestock throughout Puerto Rico was found drained of blood. These Chupacabra or goat sucker attacks caused panic with local residents who claimed a vampire was feeding on their livestock. Although descriptions have varied, most describe a hairless, alien-like monster with spikes going down its back and glowing red eyes. It sounds dubious, but how could so many people be taking pictures of the same ugly dog-like creature? The answer may be one found in science. One plausible theory is that these creatures are coyotes suffering from sarcoptic mange, an inflammatory skin condition caused by the itch-inducing parasite mite scabies. Wolves, dogs, and coyotes infected with scabies will have extreme hair loss, skin shriveling, and constricted blood vessels that can lead to life-threatening fatigue. And while usually a coyote or wolf will have no problems hunting prey, once infected by sarcoptic mange, coyotes may choose to hunt more available meals such as livestock. So it's actually possible that this creature is real, it's just not what we thought at all. I know that this takes away from some of the mystery and lore around it, but ultimately this would make a lot of sense. When you think about it, what's more likely? A space alien comes crashing to Earth and starts sucking the blood of our livestock, or some coyotes get a disease and start doing it instead. I tend to side with the coyotes. Either way though, that doesn't make these coyotes nice or friendly or approachable. Still treat them like you would a chupacabra with caution. Number four on this list is the Stymphalian birds. We gotta go all the way back to ancient Greece for this one. Caroline Betchia says, One of Hercules' labors was to kill the Stymphalian birds, man-eating birds, who had the peculiar habit of throwing dung. The Greeks were not the only ones who liked to scare their youngsters with killer bird tales. The Maori tribe of New Zealand told similar legends of the Pokie or Haikoi, a giant black and white bird that swooped down from the sky to pick off small children. Scientists today know that these thunderbirds existed. Called Called Host's Eagle, the bird stood over six feet tall and had a wingspan over eight feet. The Host Eagle would sit atop trees and then ambush its prey by swooping down at 60 mile per hour speeds. Then it would disembowel its meal with sharp talons before the poor slob could even worry about dung throwing. Hercules would never have survived these hellbirds, but you can sleep well tonight. The Host's Eagle went extinct around the 15th century. Anything that could annihilate Hercules would definitely be a no-go for me, guys. That dude was literally a demigod, and if these guys could have beaten him, then we wouldn't have stood a chance. Lucky for us, they are extinct now, but for the people back then, they would have had their hands full with these creatures. If, of course, they still had hands and the beast hadn't ripped them off yet. Number three on this list is the Kraken. We have have one of the most famous folklore creatures here, guys, that as we know now, turned out to be real. The Kraken was especially big in Norse culture. All of those people up there in the Nordic regions feared this wicked beast, as it was said to be able to pull down entire ships with hundreds of men on board. Instances where exactly that happened did actually transpire. Ships with tons of people on them that were literally made for battle would be out on the water and then boom, Kraken attack and they're toasted. Except it wasn't really the Kraken now, was it? The Kraken looks very similar to an actual animal that we have in our world that is also super deadly and really strong. The giant squid. Giant squids, in case you couldn't tell from the name, are giant, but pretty big. They are so big actually, they would have had the capability to take down an old ship like this. In fact, we've even seen these beasts do some serious damage to submarines and they're made of metal. They easily could have sunk a wooden boat from hundreds or thousands of years ago. And if you were a sailor on said wooden boat and you saw this massive creature with several tentacles sucking you to the bottom of the ocean, then you would probably exaggerate what happened as well too. 
It's very easy to see how the legend of the Kraken got started and started to snowball as more encounters with the giant squid happen. I'm glad that the Kraken isn't technically real because the giant squid is already bad enough. Number two on this list is the Charybdis. What was initially thought to be a folkloric creature may have been real, but not exactly in the way that we might think. Caroline Betchia says, nothing is more frightening than being sucked underwater by a whirlpool that feeds on human flesh three times a day. The Charybdis first appeared in Homer's Odyssey. During this epic tale, Odysseus must sail between the six-headed sea monster Scylla and the flesh-eating whirlpool Charybdis. These two dueling sea monsters attacked in intervals much like a whirlpool's regular intervals of tidal activity. It sounds terrifying, but whirlpools that pull ships underwater really do happen. Known today as Garofalo, one is found in the strait between Italy's mainland in Sicily. Garofalo occurs when winds blow across the strait in opposition to the tides. This makes it technically not a whirlpool because there's no circular motion, but it does have the ability to wreak havoc on ships and pull humans into a watery grave. So this deadly creature was real, it just ended up not being a creature at all. Back in the times when these stories were written, there would have been many folklore legends about evil sea monsters that could pull brave sailors into the sea. The reality of the situation is though that the ships we had back then kind of sucked and it was a lot easier for the weather and other conditions to sink the ships. That's why there were so many legends of monsters coming from the ocean for so long. Finally, number one on this list is the Incubus Demon. This demon is an evil demon who is thought to sneak into your home and have sexual relations with you as you're sleeping. This creature is real in a sense. It just so happens that it's actually in our minds. During the witch hunt crisis, of the 16th and 17th century, people had some really messed up ideas on how human reproduction occurred. One way was for a demon to steal a man's seed and impregnate a helpless woman during her sleep. The monster that stole the precious sperm was called a succubus and the monster that implanted the sperm was called an incubus. The incubus would sit on top of your chest while you slept, making it impossible for you to move if you woke. Sort of like being a by a possessed sexsomniac. But before you condemn medieval people as crazed horn dogs trying to attack innocent women, there is a scientific basis for believing in such monsters. The condition is called sleep paralysis. During sleep paralysis, you are fully awake but cannot move or cry for help. It feels like you've had a stroke. But although it's terrifying, sleep paralysis is harmless. Most sleep experts attribute it to being caught between REM, rapid eye movement, and NREM, non on rapid eye movement sleep. Either way, before sleep stages were understood, we can see how our ancestors would have thought it was a demon sitting on your chest. So literally this demon creature that apparently attacked people was never real at all, it just felt extremely real from our minds. I've experienced sleep paralysis before and although I didn't experience any demon thing, I can 100% see how people would have believed this back then. It could definitely have felt like that and would have got people on the lookout for this sick and twisted demon of the night. Number five on this list is the Liger. I feel like this is one of the most famous hybrid creatures that scientists have ever created. I remember as a kid thinking that these things were just some of the coolest animals ever. As an adult though, I can see how these guys could be a bit scary. A Liger is the offspring of a male lion and a female tiger. These Ligers are bred in captivity and can't produce young of their own once they're alive. The Liger contains the features of both the male lion and female tiger, but they have some certain characteristics of their own. The most notable characteristic and what makes this a pretty scary animal is its size. Tigers and lions are already pretty big animals. They're the biggest cats in the world and some of the fiercest predators. The liger is bigger than both of them. The reason this liger grows larger than them is because a female lion has a gene to dampen the growth effects of lions, resulting in lions growing to the proper size. Female tigers don't have this gene at all, so you end up with these massive beasts that dwarf tigers and lions. These animals can grow to be over a thousand pounds, which is just absolutely massive. The thing is that they often come with a lot of problems. The breeding of these creatures is often looked at as unethical because these animals come with a 
lot of birth defects that often lead to a very short life. Nature didn't intend for lions and tigers to breed, so it's natural that there would be some problems with the process. Either way, a massive jungle cat that dwarfs the king of the jungle is still pretty scary to me and not the type of animal I'd want to get in the cage with. Number four on this list is the glowfish. Glowfish are hybrid fish that are bred to do exactly what you'd expect them to do. Glow. Scientists in Singapore were looking for a way to make the fish glow. This wasn't just because it could look cool or maybe even scary, this was because the water pollution levels were getting bad and they wanted a way to be able to see the fish in polluted and muddied waters. So rather than clean the water and stop polluting it, they decided to try to make the fish glow. They took some genes from jellyfish that make the jellyfish glow and then basically added these to the fish. And sure enough, it worked. They now have several different kinds of glow in the dark fish that you can even buy as a pet. In fact, they've become rather popular and I will admit they are pretty cool. I think the little fish that we've worked on so far aren't as terrifying as some of the other creatures here, but when I was first reading about this, I was thinking about some other creatures that this could happen to, like a shark or a giant squid. If I was underwater and ran into one of those that also glows in the dark, not only would I be dead, but I'd also be freaked the heck out. Number three on this list is the Gen Pet. So the Gen Pet is actually a pet made by scientists that you can buy in a box. GenPets.com says, we use a process called zygote microinjection, which is quickly becoming a favorable method to combine DNA or to insert certain proteins from different species. Most notably, it was used in 1997 to splice mice with bioluminescent jellyfish and has since been used to create glowing rabbits, pigs, fish, and monkeys. Since then, human DNA has been injected into rabbits, chimpanzees, spider DNA into sheep, and now gen pets have arrived. Apparently, you can buy multiple different types of gen pets with multiple different personalities. Pretty cool, right? All right, I'll stop punking you guys. Gen pets are not real. The reason that I included them on this list is that for a long time, people thought that they were. If you go to the Gen Pets website, it really is super convincing. The way that this was marketed when it came out as well really had people buying into the legitimacy of these Gen Pets. They're super creepy looking things that I frankly wouldn't want to have as a pet, but I guess if you could grow it from a box, then I guess that'd be kind of neat. Sadly, we are unable to do that yet though. However, I could totally see something like Gen Pets coming out in the future that is actually real, and if they did look like this, then yeah, that'd be pretty terrifying. Number two on this list is the see-through frog. That's right, folks. Scientists have literally concocted a see-through frog in a lab. NBC News says, Scientists at Hiroshima University have succeeded in breeding see-through frogs, an innovation that could cut down on future dissections. Samida, an amphibian specialist who led the university's research team, said the transparent skinned frogs could become widely used in scientific research because internal organs and blood blood vessels can be observed without dissecting the creatures. Scientists have long known that certain recessive genes resulted in pale skinned frogs, Samita explained. The researchers were delighted to find that under the right conditions, second generations of pairs of frogs with those recessive genes produced transparent offspring. Now these frogs are definitely kind of creepy guys. Like they're cool, I'll give you that, but seeing the inside of an animal as its organs are literally moving around and doing stuff is a lot. I do like the idea of this though. The main reason they did this was to cut back on dissections of the animals. I remember dissecting my frog in grade 10 and that was definitely an experience that I think I could have avoided. I don't know if having to handle a see-through frog would be a lot better though. Taking a look at some of the pictures of these guys is already a bit unsettling, but at least this might save a few froggy lives. And finally, number one on this list is killer bees. The origin story behind killer bees is truly something directly from a disaster movie. IFL Science says, It started as a humble attempt to increase honey production during the 1950s and ended in thousands of newly created killer bees accidentally escaping, amounting in a trail of bee stung bodies across the Americas. It all began in a lab near Rio Claro in Brazil around 1957. Biologist Warwick E. Kerr was commissioned by 
by the Brazilian government to create a species of bee that produced more honey. European species of honeybees had been introduced to South America, but unfortunately, they proved to be fairly unproductive in the sleepy heat of Brazil. Kerr and his team eventually created Africanized honeybees, now known as killer bees, through selective breeding of the African honeybee with various European honeybees. Initially, it was a success, as the new hybrids seemed to do a much better job of producing honey. There was one big downside though. They also adopted some extreme colony defense instincts. Then came the decisive moment. Somehow, under hazy circumstances, thousands of these bees managed to escape. Since these killer bees have gotten out into the world, over 400 people have died from them. Which is crazy to think about because these bees don't have any more potent venom than regular bees. Their sting is just as harmful as a normal bee that you'd see your walk by on your local hike. What makes these bees so killer, what makes them so deadly is their temperament. The killer instinct to fight instead of flee. To go after any threat that is in their way and do so as a team. These bees will literally chase a human being for over half a mile before finally giving up and going back to their hive. Think about having to run as fast as you can for half a mile from a swarm of bees. A regular bee doesn't want to sting you, it only ever wants to do so if it feels that you're a major threat. These bees sense that you're a threat and then turn into a threat of their own. And all of this could have been avoided had scientists not decided to play with nature. This is one of the few instances in history where we've taken an animal and completely changed its attitude but had it maintain the same physical characteristics as the original animal. It would be a really cool science experiment had it not been so deadly up until this point.